Shut the fuck up! Say Christ is Lord. Say Christ is Lord. Say it! What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Unpopular Opinion and today I'm going to be talking about the movie Goodfellas and I'm going to be explaining why I think it is criminally overrated. So a few years ago, I made a two-part video criticizing Martin Scorsese, and I briefly explained my thoughts on Goodfellas. So in that, I kind of talked about it a little bit. So today, this video is going to be a more specific review where I can dive deeper into my thoughts and give my full focus on the movie Goodfellas and explain my opinions on why I feel the way I feel about this movie. But first, I want to preface by saying this. If you're a fan of Goodfellas, if you like this movie, this is not a personal attack on you. If you like Goodfellas, fellas. Good for you. God bless you. I hope you enjoy this movie. And I really mean that. I really, really, truly mean that. I'm not trying to convince you to dislike this movie. I'm just merely explaining why I prefer not to watch it. That's my attitude. I prefer not to watch this movie. And I'm going to be explaining my opinions why. Also, guys, I don't want anyone in the comments saying things like, you're only doing this because you're a Marvel fan. I'm not a Marvel fan. I hate the MCU. I think I think Marvel sucks. So when people are like, you're only criticizing Scorsese because what he said about Marvel, I agree with what he said about Marvel. I think Marvel's stupid. I agree with what Martin Scorsese said. So this is not me reacting to something he said a few years ago about comic book movies. I'm not doing that. So don't comment that in the comments. All I ask is that you just hear me out and just watch till the end of the video. That's all I ask. So guys, with that out of the way, let's just jump right into this. So Goodfellas is a biopic that features the life story of the real life mob associate, Henry Hill. It shows his upbringing and his introduction into the gangster lifestyle, and then his downfall, which leads to him becoming an informant in the witness protection program. You need Henry, you don't need me, right? That's right. And frankly, I don't care whether you go or not. Now, a major issue I have with this movie is I don't think it does a good job in telling the story of Henry Hill. You what? I think it doesn't do a good job in explaining his story, and I think it's pretty vague when it comes to telling the history of his criminal career. It doesn't really give proper details about his life, and that's a major issue I have with this movie. So if you go into this movie not knowing anything, and you're just, I want to learn more about his criminal career, you're going to be leaving a lot to be desired, because there's just not a lot of information that comes from this film. Honestly, I've seen this movie over 20 times, and... I get really nothing from it. And then one time by pure chance, I saw a documentary on Henry Hill's life. And that one hour explained his criminal career better than this movie could. Not only that, the documentary actually delved deeper into what him and his crew of mob associates were responsible for. And it actually made a lot of sense. Now, I know this movie's supposed to be entertaining. And I know it was based off of the book Wise Guy by Nicholas Pelagi. And there is a lot of historical source material. And that might be a little difficult to put onto screen to transfer all that source material and get it to film. But I still think this movie did a poor job with that. It alludes to some of the criminal activities, but it barely gives context or more information. So overall, main complaint, this movie doesn't do a good job in explaining the story of Henry Hill. So another one of my main complaints about this movie is basically how it's constructed and how it unfolds. Basically the movie's a montage of smaller scenes that are kind of like two minutes long. And this montage of scenes is sewed together by a voiceover and an awesome soundtrack, so that tricks you into thinking you're having a good time. But if you remove the voiceover narration and the music, what you're left with is a bunch of small scenes that don't have a lot of sustenance and are tiny, really quick sequences. It's like this movie is a compilation of B-roll footage and it lacks a lot of real authentic scenes that are structured or grounded in like some sort of present moment and unfolding in a normal natural way. There's just a big lack of structure when it comes to the scenes in this movie. I'd say there's three parts to the film, maybe three parts to this movie where it doesn't rely on that voiceover technique or the, the there's no voiceover, no montage, no music, and it gives the chance to the actors to just act and let the scene unfold like a real authentic structured scene. And in those scenes, they're not second banana to the voiceover. And those scenes, I'd say that like the scene where they kill Billy Bats and stuff him in the trunk. Go home and get your fucking shine box. Motherfucking mutt, you fucking piece of shit. Or the scene when they go to Tommy's mom's house in the middle of the night, or maybe the scene where, where Karen's threatening Henry's life. Oh, yeah. 
you insulted him a little bit. You got a little out of order yourself. No, I didn't Sorry. insult him. I didn't insult insulted him. him a little bit. But like I said, the movie is just a quick montage of scenes that are sewed together by the music and voiceover. And I think Martin Scorsese relied on this technique way too much. No, no I didn't insult nobody. No. Give us a drink. Give us a drink. Okay. It's almost like like the, the whole movie is just unfolding way too quick in front of you and you don't even really grasp what's going on. I don't know. I just don't think that's an effective storytelling way. It, you know, cool once in a while for some sequences in the movie, but for the whole film to be like that just makes it unenjoyable to me. Never ran on your friends and always keep your mouth shut. Another thing I, I was really disappointed about is this doesn't really feel like a mafia movie, in my opinion. I know Henry Hill's a mob associate and his his criminal misadventures, for lack of a better term, were real authentic to history. Oh, you broke your cherry. But the thing is, Henry, for a big portion of the movie, is doing hard drugs and selling drugs, which that wasn't a mafia thing that his crew did, and that was punishable by death at the time. So him doing all those drugs, that's not really mafia activity. Again, it is historically accurate, but this doesn't feel mafia. And the fact of the matter is, the big things that him and his crew were responsible for, we don't even really get to see them. The Air France robbery, eh. I mean, the Air France robbery, they go in, they pick up the money, and that's really it. Nothing crazy like that. Air France made me. We walked out with $420,000 without using a gun. But then the Lufthansa heist, which is self-described in the movie, the biggest heist in American history. The scene is Henry's in the shower and here's a news broadcast over it. I personally really would have loved to have seen what actually happened at Lufthansa. I would have loved to have seen the crew actually stealing the money, the armed men going in there and, and robbing the place. That would have been so cool to see. Now I know the movie is from Henry's perspective and it's supposed to be his story told from his point of view, but there were other scenes in the movie that we saw that Henry would have never seen. For example, when Tommy gets whacked, Oh, no. Henry wasn't there to see that. We see that in the movie. What happened? They whacked up the fucking whack. Or the scenes where where Karen is is confronting the woman who Henry's having an affair with, or the scene where Jimmy's potentially about to whack Karen. Henry wasn't there for that, but we got to see those. So it would have been cool to see the Lufthansa heist. That was disappointing to not see. This just doesn't really feel like a mafia movie to, to me. It doesn't feel, you don't see a lot of these criminal undertakings. You, we see them stealing trucks a little bit, but that's again, very small portion of the movie and there's not a lot of information about it. And another thing, whenever I criticize this movie, whenever I attack the movie, a lot of people are so quick to say, well, what about Joe Pesci? My opinion on Joe Pesci's performance, I think this performance was so overrated. Now, let me preface by saying, I am a massive Joe Pesci fan. I loved Lethal Weapon, I loved Home Alone, My Cousin Vinny, even though I don't like the movie Raging Bull, he was fantastic in Raging Bull. But this movie, I didn't really like his performance. His performance was just, basically him relying on cliches to portray the stereotypical obnoxious Italian American. I think this is funny, huh? He's having, what the fuck are you looking at? I, I just don't think that requires a lot of talent to do. No disrespect to Joe Pesci, but I don't think it requires a big range of acting power to basically just be an annoying Italian guy from New York. That's just, he's portraying the stereotype. That's not Oscar worthy in my opinion. And whenever I say this, people's follow up is almost always, but what about the funny how scene? Now, the funny how scene is the stuff of cinema legends. There's no question. People use it unironically all the time. I've used it before because it's a funny gag. It's an iconic scene and I actually like that scene. However, my problem with that scene is this. You know, people always say, Joe Pesci improvised that. He crafted that scene and it's supposed to highlight how Henry Hill was always on edge and he never knew that one wrong word could be the, the difference between life and death with these mafia sickos, which that's true. My problem with that scene is this. It was, it was displayed way too early in the movie. And that kind of takes away the scary tension factor of it. And let me tell you something. Tommy is supposed to be a volatile, angry psychopath who will kill someone for merely insulting him or bashing a bottle over their head because he asked to pay the bill. Like, you owe me money. Can I have my money, please? Bang, over the head. You know, Sonny, you're a real fucking mutt. <laughs> Oh. 
prior to that scene, all we knew about Tommy was that he was a young man who used to work with Henry, and that's really it. So we, we didn't have any displays of his violence or his volatile personality or his anger. So if you've never seen the movie, you don't know any references to Goodfellas, you're, you're going in blind. You watch that scene, you know, how am I funny? Your main re reaction, your main thought is probably gonna be something along the lines of, all right, this guy's pretty sensitive. He's got some anger issues, but nothing screams, oh, Henry's in mortal danger because he said the wrong word. Get the f*** out of here. Tommy. <laughs> you motherfucker! I almost had him! I almost had him! Had that scene been later in the movie, like we saw Tommy killing someone for something so small, then that scene would be much more impactful. But I just don't think it has the same gravity if that's pretty much, that's like, that's Joe Pesci's, one of his earliest scenes. And prior to that, we don't have much on his character. So it wasn't as impactful as if it, as if we saw him doing some, some violent stuff prior to that. Like it's, it reminds me of that scene from No Country for Old Men when Anton Chigurh is like, what's the most you've ever lost on a coin toss? The reason why that scene is scary is because in the opening scene, we, we see Anton Chigurh strangle someone to death with handcuffs and he pushes a hole through some dude's head with some pressurized valve. And he's like, Hey, what's the most you've ever lost on a coin toss? Toss because if you don't win this coin toss, I will kill you. And we as the audience know, yeah, he's gonna do it because we've seen him. The funny how, not the same thing. I'm not downplaying that scene, but I don't think it's, I do not think that that is the definitive explanation as to why this performance is supposedly great. Circling back to what I previously said, I don't think it requires a lot of talent to play a stereotypical Italian guy. Now, make no mistake, I don't want you guys to misinterpret what I'm saying. I'm not saying that, oh, this is offensive because I'm not one of those phony outrage people because it's, I mean, Italian stereotypes are actually really funny. Everyone likes to do them. So I'm not saying Joe Pesci's, oh, he's being a stereotype, Ugh, cancel culture. I'm not doing that. I'm just saying there's nothing Oscar worthy about the performance because it's just him going like, hey, oh, what are you doing? Oh, tell me about it. Tell me what's so funny. And then him screaming. That's not Oscar worthy. I will tell you this, Ray Liotta, his performance it, it gets sidelined. It's overshadowed by Joe Pesci's when in my opinion, I think Ray Liotta was really acting circles around the whole cast. Him and Karen as well. The woman who played Karen, they did she did a fantastic job. But Ray Liotta, he displayed a wide range of talent. You get the scenes where he's angry or deranged with, with crazed rage. That was displayed very well. You, you, you see that he's fearing for his life and he's on edge all the time. So like the scenes where his friends do something criminally outrageous and he's like, oh my God, these people are psychos, I'm in over my head. That was displayed perfectly by Ray Liotta. So when they kill Spider, you can actually see him having concern, but then two scenes later, you, you see him being angry and beating someone up or him crying when he realizes the jig is up or you just, the fact that he's strung out by the end of the movie after all the drug use and all he's been through, really well portrayed by Ray Liotta. In terms of performances, I find it very unfortunate that Ray Liotta doesn't get mentioned like Joe Pesci does. Sorry, no disrespect to Joe Pesci, but his performance, very overrated. Nothing crazy, nothing Oscar worthy. Maybe it's iconic because Italian stereotypes are funny and people love that. So I don't know. I just, I don't see it that way. The opening of the movie was a strong opening. It was really cool seeing Henry Hill being seduced by the glamor of the mafia lifestyle. So him growing up in the time where he's burning cars and selling cigarettes. I really like that scene. The opening scene when they kill Billy Bats, it's like the thing William Friedkin said, if you open a movie up with a murder, you're gonna have people's attention for the rest of the film. I agree with that. <laughs> But I think by the time Henry becomes an adult, the film just gets boring. It strings you along. By the time you get to the end, I think to myself, oh, man, I kind of just wasted time watching this movie. It's boring, strung along. I feel like how Henry's supposed to feel like a dried up, nasty, crusty towel. And I mean, that might sound harsh, but I just happen to find this movie extremely boring and not captivating enough, not entertaining enough to hold my attention. However, I will say that the ending sequence in the courthouse was actually really awesome in my opinion i thought that was so cool that how he's like well now it's all like so you hear the voiceover for, for like the entire movie so it's like a flashback and then henry finally breaks the fourth wall and he walks up to the audience almost as everything's paused and he's like and now it's all over when i was broke i would go out and rob some more and now it's all over. That was really cool. So you see him in the suburban neighborhood. He's like, I gotta live the rest of my life like everyone else, like a schnook. Egg noodles and ketchup. That's what he gets for spaghetti. And then you see Joe Pesci shooting at the screen, which is the allusion to the Great Train Robbery movie, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> that was a really awesome sequence. And then the movie ends. The opening was strong. The ending was fantastic but 
the middle not really entertaining. So I always say, what's the primary objective of a film? To entertain the audience. And I, I personally, I, I am the minority on this. I'm fully aware that I'm in the minority. I just wasn't entertained by this movie. So those are really my main issues with the film. I will say things that I liked would be obviously the sounds, the sound effects for the gunfire was pretty cool. I liked Ray Liotta's performance. I liked the, the, the actress who played Karen. She did a very good job. It's not a bad movie. Don't like, it's not a bad movie to me. I just, eh. I give it a four out of 10. It's it's not good, but it's not horrible. I don't say it's like a terrible movie. I'd say, eh, not, not for me. That's the best way to explain it. Now, before a lot of people are just gonna type in the comments, blah, blah, blah. I grew up in an area that was heavily Italian American. So you're probably gonna be like, oh, he doesn't get it. You don't understand, you're not. Trust me, I've been to New York so many times. I grew up around Italian Americans, like, Half of my family is Italian. So when people say, oh, you're not gonna get it. You're not, you don't understand. Oh, I get it. I, I fully get it. I understand. I grew up around this sort of environment. So I'm exposed to it. It's not foreign to me and it's not weird or anything like that. I'm very familiar. It's a very familiar thing. So I just happen to dislike the film. So to refresh, I'm not trying to convince you to not like this movie. I'm not saying this movie is a terrible, I just, I think it's an overrated film. I think it gets more attention than it deserves and I prefer not to watch it. That's my attitude on the film. Dare I ask you to like this video and subscribe? Uh, I'm going to, I know a lot of people are probably angry. I doubt, I highly doubt a lot of you have made it to the end. I'm pretty sure a lot of you just clicked on it and be that as it may. If you've made it this far, please do me a solid. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe. Comment below to let me know. Actually, I know the comments are gonna be filled with angry people saying you're an idiot or you're too stupid to comprehend the masterpiece of this movie. Okay, fine. Be my guest. Give me your best shot. You, you, there's nothing you can say to me in the comments about my opinions on movies that, that I haven't already heard to my face before because I've had this conversation with dozens of people in real life. So anyway, guys, comment below, like, subscribe, check me out on Instagram. That'll also be linked in the description below. Follow my, or not follow, but subscribe to my new, <laughs> I'm falling apart. Subscribe to my new YouTube channel, Unboxing with Bob Phillips. It's basically where I open goodies and collectibles and build things in front of you like that, Legos, open packages from the mail. That'll be linked in the description below, Unboxing with Bob Phillips. Highly recommend you check it out. That's pretty much all I got for you guys. So I'll see you on the next Unpopular Opinion.